All right, if you've been following along so far, in part one, I received this plane in the mail and I cleaned up the sole and the cheeks. In part two, we pulled all the bits together, cleaned them all up. Now in part three, it's time to put it all together, find a handle, get it all tuned up and start using it. So please enjoy part three of restoring classic Stanley five and a quarter hand plane. Start putting all back together. Well, that's a good place to leave it for part two. All the pieces are pulled together and cleaned up and ready to go back together. So I look forward to having your company at the bench in part three. When it all goes together, we tune it up and see if it works. Dry it all out. If you've got a compressor, use a compressor and just blow it out. Make sure you've got safety glasses on and well ventilated because you want to be breathing the fumes in. And when I put it together, instead of using oil, uh, a lot of people will use oil and put it on the threads. You do run the risk of that oil escaping sometimes and it can end up on your job. So what I'm doing here is a bit of candle grease and just pull it over the threads. Exactly the same as if I'm putting screws into timber of a job. That way I get the lubrication, but I don't get the mess. I've set my frogs up too, so they are right on the opening of the mouth, uh, the back of the mouth. And that screw there is the adjustment for that. Screw it up gently until you square the back of the mouth. And tighten down the screws. Put the adjustment wheel. Again, okay, work a bit of candle grease on that. Remember, it's the left hand thread. So it goes on the opposite of the way you'd think it should go on. And I'll put that there for the moment. The knob, I like to keep the patina on the knob. So I'm just going to clean that with a bit of steel wool. Finer steel wool this time. This is triple O or four O. And then I'll put some polish on it. It's interesting when you go down you can start to see a bit of the history of the piece. It's got paint marks on it. So you'd sort of half expect either a handyman or a builder's had this. And it's got paint splatter during its life. This pin <coughs> pins, um, I wouldn't say it's had abuse, but it uh, at some stages got wet and corrosion's got into the bar a little bit, but Nothing too bad. Again, put a bit of candle on both threads. Pop it in there. Put a little bit of wax on that later on. Now to the blade, the all, in, the all important blade. Rust up here, which I'll take off with some wet and dry, and then we'll sharpen it. And what I do enjoy about this one, if you have a look at the blade, is Stanley made in USA, and the plane is Stanley made in the USA. So it's not been pulled together from other planes and to make one good one or had a plane blade um, replacement. So I'm happy about that. I can do that all day long and I'm never going to cut myself on that. It is useless. In fact, I'm not even going to try and plane with it because where's a bit of wood? There is nothing. Watch this though. 
Actually, I'll just have a clean up here because we're down near the business end. We've nearly finished it. All right, now I've flattened that blade with uh, 400 wet and dry. If I want to check the flatness, I've got a diamond stone here. If I just give that a few rubs while it's dry, and I look down there, I can see that's pretty flat. It's flat enough for my purpose anyway. If you want to double check and you've got one of these things, you can always put it on the side of the wheel and it will give you a nice flat back as well. And that's even better than the diamond stone. Okay, to set this up, pop it in the jig. I want this to be 25 degrees. What I do, which possibly isn't necessary, but I get a black texture and just draw it over the blade like that. Even though these grind precision, I want to see what's happening myself. Turn it on and let's go. That black texture line is nearly all gone. But I still can't feel a back bevel, uh, a wire at the back, so a little bit further to go. <coughs> little trick when you're sharpening. If you look at the blade head on like that, and you can see reflection, it's still not sharp. Because if you can see reflection, that means it's a flat surface. So we want to keep going until there's absolutely no reflection and I've got a burr at the back of it. Now I can feel a very fine wire at the back. Let's take that off on the honing wheel. As you can see, it didn't take very long. Really nice razor edge on it. We'll put it together and see if it works. Oh, I've got to find a handle first. Got bits of plain bits here. See that? No. There you go. It's not too bad. Almost a match. I only have about 30 second or two thirty second of the blade hanging out. Tighten. Just have a little bit of blade hanging out, make sure the lateral's even. I reckon that should be pretty good. So what I'll do, instead of moving the cameras around, I'll use this vise over here. And yes, that's the pencil cases, I'm going to finish them off. The candle grease on the sole and we'll see how we go. It's a little bit more fine tuning. There we go. So 45 bucks on eBay and about an hour and a half of my time I've now got a plane that would have cost me three four hundred dollars so it's easy to do them up a little bit messy but just takes a bit of patience and getting used to and then you've got a, a really nice plane that you can get to know or a tool that you can get to know and start using and it becomes a part of your workshop an extension of your hand and a part of you
So that's it. How to do up a plane. Really, really simple. Nothing too complicated. And yes, if you've got a, a grinding wheel, sure, you can grind them on that. But if you've got access to a water-cooled wheel, you're going to do your tools and the steel a big favour. And yourself, because you're not always going back to the grinding wheel. But anyway, one more user, and this is going into the toolbox in Room for Woodwork in the in-house workshop. So you'll see it getting the work out up there as well. This is Steve pulling the shed door down saying remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe. Enjoy what you do. Have fun. And I look forward to having you back in the workshop very, very soon. And thank you to all my Patreon supporters as well. I really appreciate your help. And I enjoy corresponding, even though it's not as often as I'd like it to be. Bye for now.